How many of you would consider the presence of giants on the Earth in the very distant past to be real? From the Easter Island statues to the Egyptian obelisk, we are dumbfounded in the modern age as how this would have been achieved. But it was, and the evidence is literally sitting in plain sight. We ponder the question as to who built the pyramids. We simply don't know the answer to this for sure, but we can at least speculate through ancient texts that giants had a huge role to play in this. Could the Colossi of Memnon actually be a representation of these huge beings? You never know, right? There are even massive stone boxes at the Saqqara Serapium that are so enormous that you would have to consider they were built for giants by giants. A resting place as they awaited rapture back up into heaven. Were these stone boxes built for them to habitate within as they awaited for God? Here is an interesting comparison to the timeline of our civilization that we were educated to believe. So we began at the Stone Age, progressed to the Bronze, and then to the Iron Age. Then we have the oldest pyramids popping up all over the place somewhere between the Stone Age and the Bronze Age. This is characteristic to saying that at some point in the timeline, we invented the wheel. Another made a cart. But in between the wheel and the cart, we find a brand new Ferrari 250 GTO. This is a realistic comparison when considering the construction of the pyramids. As you know, our historical timeline is extremely flawed. We say it's time to wake up. Think about this. Cavemen to building pyramids literally overnight, no middle bit. We say giants built the pyramids. We also say that there was an attempt to wipe them from the face of the earth by the Anunnaki, hence the Great Flood. Anyway guys, we don't want to stay away from the subject of this video here, so what if giants did exist? What if they still exist? What if an American crack team of special forces had a battle with one of the surviving giants? Wait till you hear this. What if we were to tell you that the US military personnel have gave statements suggesting they killed or captured a 12-foot giant in Afghanistan in 2002. This sounds like something straight out of a science fiction fantasy novel, we know. But the soldiers are telling us what they saw was real. They shot at the giant being multiple times with machine gun rounds, yet the giant was still mobilized, even killing one soldier by spearing him through the chest. One of the troops whose identity has been protected in an interview, going by the name of Mr. K, reveals the following. We were on patrol when we got to this cave. We noticed there were US radio materials smashed on the floor. We took up positions outside the cave as we feared an ambush. When this red-haired giant comes out from inside the cave, he was at least 12 to 15 feet in height. He was a red-haired monster. The sizes described by Mr. K would put his height easily beyond 1,100 pounds. Just off the, off the brick. So we're coming down a, a mountainside. And it was a nice, nice path, goat path. As we bent around this corner, you could see this opening of the cave. There's a cave as we're coming around. And then I see there's a lot of rocks, which is another oddity, and then bone matter. When I'm not close enough to identify what kind of bones, but I did see something I knew was a piece of our communications equipment. So instantly, we're thinking ambush, maybe animal, you know, could be anything. And there was enough room in front of this cave, but it had a sheer drop off. But there was enough room that we actually got into a decent dispersal in case of ambush. You see something coming out of the cave, and it's moving with a speed and agility that catches you off guard. Everybody. Everybody. And he comes out. It was a man at least 12 to 15 feet in height. This is a monster, red beard, then his hair was longish past the shoulder, a scarlet red, and Dan runs at him and starts shooting, which broke all of us into the reality. Because it was so now, real. now your training is kicking Oh yeah, okay. muscle memory. Complete muscle memory. We can't help but compare this eyewitness account to the Nephilim as foretold in the Bible. You would assume that he is not alone. Maybe there are caves that go underground or something leading to another world within the earth. Perhaps those humans would kill them with a hidden weapon. 
simply by sneezing or breathing, much like the first conquistadors to reach South America, is that a possibility you have to wonder? They are mentioned many times in ancient texts. In the book of Genesis, it reads, when people began to multiply on the face of the ground and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that they were fair and they took wives for themselves of all that they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in mortals forever, for they are flesh. Their days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans who bore children to them. These were the heroes that were of old warriors of renown. The word Nephilim is translated as giants in some Bibles and left untranslated in others. The sons of God have been interpreted to be fallen angels. It is thought that they later inhabited Canaan at the time of the Israelites' conquest of Canaan. The Lord said to Moses, Send twelve men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I have given to the Israelites. So they went up and spied out the land. And they told him, Yet the people who live in the land are strong, and the towns are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. They brought to the Israelites an unfavorable report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are of great size. There we saw the Nephilim, and to ourselves we seemed like grasshoppers compared with their great presence. The first part of the book of Enoch describes the fall of the watchers as the angels who fathered the Nephilim. Interestingly, this ancient text also details how these fallen angels taught mankind how to make swords and knives, and Azazel taught men to work swords and knives and shields and breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth, the art of working them, and breastplates and ornaments, and the use of antimony, and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and coloring of tinctures. And there arose much godliness, and they committed fornication, and they were led astray, and became corrupted in all their ways. By the time of Noah, God judged the earth to be corrupt, and this is why the great deluge was cast upon the entire earth. So if all is to be believed, this is the recap. The watchers were dispatched to the earth to watch over humans. But the lust felt by the watchers regarding the women of earth lured them down and they had children with them. The children were the Nephilim. The giants endangered humanity and eventually an ark was built to preserve life on earth as a deluge was released upon the earth. What do you guys think of the giants? Could some have survived? Could they be responsible for the pyramids? Are the ancient texts literal accounts of historical encounters? It all dates back to the Anunnaki, after all. Comments below and thank you for watching.